Hi guys, Steady Eddie here, this time coming to you from the charming city of Ayutthaya in Thailand. And in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts on Britain and what I think of the place now that I've left and I've got no plans to return. You may not agree with me, but I'm entitled to my opinion. Would you still care about your country after you retired abroad? Now, it may seem like a strange topic of conversation in a place like this, but I'm kind of looking at it in, in terms of perspective. It is a month ago today since I stepped off the plane at Bangkok Airport. I'm doing a little bit of traveling around Thailand, uh, you know, for a couple of months. Uh, but then I'll settle in, in the one place and, you know, as soon as I get tired of traveling, I'll settle and I'm going to be out here indefinitely. Not necessarily Thailand, but probably, you know, Cambodia or, or uh, in this region uh, anyway. So, would you still care about your country after you, uh, you know, left and, you know, moved to another part of the world? So, how, how are you? How are you? An old, an old monk there, old monk there, looking at me with curiosity, don't blame him. Okay, so, a month ago today, I stepped off the plane at Bangkok, and that month has gone very, very quickly. It's gone okay, I, you know, my channel's done okay, and, you know, everything's fine, no problems. I haven't had one bout of illness in the last month, you know, because I've been careful what I've, I've been eating. And um, I've been careful, you know, I've been drinking a little bit less. But anyway, it's not just about me. So one month into retirement in Southeast Asia. And what's changed? Well, what's changed is that I get the feeling that I'm no longer going to care so much about the country that I come from, which is the United Kingdom. Now, I know a lot of guys are very, very negative these days about their country, whether it's America, Canada, even Australia. Uh, there's a lot of negativity. But I've got to talk about the UK because that's the one that I come from. So that's the one that I'm going to judge. Now, I've always been a keen follower of the news. Uh, you know, what's happening in, in Britain, you know, my country, politics, that sort of stuff. And I watch a lot of it. I used to read a lot of newspapers but I don't really read many newspapers nowadays. I switch on, you know, you know, in the news and see what's happening. And, um, yeah, I, I like to stay fairly up to date with current affairs, all that kind of stuff. But the fact is, I've made the decision that I don't want to live in Britain anymore. I don't want to live there. I, I want to live somewhere like here. I've no plans to go back to Britain for all the reasons I've explained in previous videos. So now that I'm out of Britain, should I still care about Britain, the country where I lived all my life? Should I still care what's happened? Well, or what's happening rather? Well, <clears throat> I'm not so sure about that. One thing is for certain that I'm not going to be as obsessed with British news stories as I was in the past. I'm, I've moved all this way out here and I've got to look after myself now. I'm in a strange foreign land. It's one that I know well, and I know the script of these countries. Uh, Thailand, Cambodia, all the neighbouring countries. I've been coming here for long enough. But at the end of the day, it's still not my natural uh, country. And, uh, you know, I've got to, you know, act like I'm a guest here. I've got to, you know, you know can I completely feel at home in this country? Well, I feel, I feel okay now. In fact, what wandering around here, I feel more relaxed than I would in most of the towns in England. Seriously, seriously. I'm wandering around here and some of these charming people... Hello, how are you? Hello. Some of these charming people here are smiling at me. They're looking at me quite curiously. But, you know, they're, they're okay. They're cool. Uh, you know, they're cool. No, no one's bothering me in a way. Hello, how are you? How are you? How are you? Okay. They're wondering who this weirdo is wearing a hat. That's here, okay, in this town called Ayuta in Thailand. Now, if I was in a town in Britain, right now, at this moment in time, holding this selfie stick with, with my mobile phone talking into it, do you know what would happen? People would be looking at me curious. 
quick, someone call the police. There's a weirdo in town. He's a weirdo. He's talking to himself into the camera. And then somebody, some, some bloody smackhead would probably come up to me and say, Hey, mate, can I borrow your mobile phone, can I? When really he probably wants to do, do a drugs deal. Uh, or somebody would come up to me, Hey, mate, what's that you're doing, eh? You couldn't lend us a fiver, could you? That's what would happen in Britain. Skank, skanky, skanky Britain. Uh, I can't, I, do you know something? Where, where, I, where I've lived for many years in England, if I wandered through the town on my mobile phone talking to someone, I'd put the bloody phone away before I get into the town, before somebody has to borrow it. I'm being serious. Britain's full of skanks these days. And I'm not too sure about foreigners, I'm talking usually about white English people. You know. Oh, anyway. Oh, looks lovely. Looks beautiful. Looks beautiful. Oh, makes my blood boil, it does. Skanks on the streets of Britain, an advanced country like that. And the thing is, these skanks have the opportunity to work and go out and work and make a living and put money away. But no, they want to spend it on, uh, you know, alcohol and other substances. And oh my God almighty. I don't care about the dosses in England. I didn't care about, hello, how are you? I, di I didn't care about the dosses when I was there and I don't care about them now. They should all bloody go and get a job and work and save money and then maybe they could do what I'm doing right now, but they never will. Okay, so I've said me piece on that one. So what else is it in England that I don't care about? Well, how about, uh, how, how about the police? I don't care about them. The busies, I don't care about them. The law enforcement, our country's becoming a law, you know, I'm saying our country, the one that I don't want to live in anymore. Our country has become kind of lawless. The police, day by day, they're becoming a bloody waste of space. There's hardly a day, a week goes by without, I, you know, I see in the news that, you know, some officer has been uh, charged with, with um, indecent photos, swapping images with his colleagues, uh, indecent uh, images of all kinds of heinous things. Uh, and police, where are they when you need them? If your house gets burgled, don't even waste your time calling the police. They're too busy. There's people filling up their, their shopping trolleys full of groceries in, in, in supermarkets and running off without paying. Don't bother calling the police. Too busy. And yeah, the busies are not too busy to arrest a 16-year-old girl for using the L word. Yes, remember that news story from some months ago? Uh, some 16-year-old girl who was a little bit inebriated called one of the officers, you look like my L Nana or something like that and about seven of them arrested her now this is the problem with the busies you see it's all about results it's all about results there's real criminals they could be catching but no they want a quick result the easier the better and arresting a 16 year old girl for using the l word well it's a result isn't it uh, you know gets them off the streets and gives them a bit of paperwork to do for a couple of days now, i don't care about the skanks of britain i don't care about the busies um, yeah, you know, oh my God almighty. Okay, so there you go. There you go, there's a monk. He's looking at me kind of curiously there. But at least he isn't asking to borrow my mobile phone or borrow, you know, wanting to borrow a fiver off me. So look at the big issue, Britain. Look at the big issue. Immigration, okay. Now, this is a massive subject. It's, it's, it's forever in the news, and it's in the news day and night and day and night. Now, in fact, it's something that I don't even want to talk about again. Well, I am going to talk about it, even though I don't want to, simply because it's such a massive subject, you feel you've got to talk about it. But the thing about immigration is that in Britain, it's here to stay, or rather it's there to stay. It's there in Britain to stay. It's not going to get any better. I mean, the country is flooded with mass immigration, uh, illegal or Im uh, illegal. The, Ill the legal immigrants probably contribute a lot to Britain. They, you know, they probably, you know, and there's an argument that historically we owe it to them to welcome them into Britain. So I'm not going to get into all that. But the illegal ones, they are worrying. I mean, you know, look at the attack that took place about that nut of that, you know, um, who... Oh, I don't even like talking, but it's been in the news today about a... Through 
has to, to, as, as a family of people, yeah. Jesus, it's sickening, it's sickening. These illegal immigrants, you, you don't know who these people are. A lot of them want to do Britain harm. But, you know, it's not going to get any better. You, you know, these third world countries are just banging out their children like there's no tomorrow without thought of being able to look after them. And then all these years later, they're, you know, they're coming across in dinghies expecting, you know, the Western world to look after them. And uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's not going to get any better. You know, if, if, if you know immigration in Britain really upsets you so much, then my advice is leave the country because it's here to stay. It's only going to get worse. So anyway, Britain. Okay, I mean, we've said said enough about that. So anyway, I'm six thousand miles away from Britain. Do I care about Britain for one for what reason? Well, I suppose really. Forget about me for a, a moment. You know, think about you. If you were to do the same and, you know, come to this part of the world and leave Britain, the country you were born in and lived all your life, if you cared about it for one reason, well, there'd be two reasons mainly, wouldn't there? There would be two main reasons. One of them, you may have family connections there that you still care about. Um, or also, if you have financial interests in Britain, which you still care about. So, okay, yeah, I, I grant, granted uh, all, all of that. Now, I'm not going to tell you my status on all of that kind of stuff. But uh, let's just say that, you know, Britain doesn't care about me, so why should I care about Britain? i still got some friends back in Britain who I, who I care, care about. But, um, yeah, you know, yeah, you know, Britain doesn't really, really give a damn about me, so... So why should I care? I'm 6,000 miles away from Britain. I'm in this beautiful environment here. Why should I care about what goes on about Britain? I mean, let's be honest. The country's it's become a bit of a mess. I mean, I've received lots of messages since I left a month ago. Um, it was saying, Ed, I wish I could join you. Or oh, you're doing the right thing. You know, Britain's gone to the dogs. Uh, I'm talking to dogs. Look at it. Look at them there. Hello. Hello. How are you? Okay. <laughs> Speaking of the devil. Okay, what was I saying now? Yeah, yeah, but I mean... You know, Britain, from my perspective now, looking at it, from the, you know, from the news that I'm seeing, Jesus, I mean, it's just, it is going to the dogs. I mean, it's just gone down a swanee river. It's, it's being flushed down the toilet. Britain's a great country, but if it was that great, then how come it's got so many problems? And as for the politics of the country, don't even go there. They're all lying bastards, they are. They all are. There's none of them any better than each other. They are not going to solve your problems. All the hang-ups you've got about the cost of living, um, the rich don't worry about the cost of living because they're just getting richer and richer. The governments are going to make sure of that. And, um, you, you know, and it's, and it, whereas the poor are struggling to pay bills. And, oh, I, I don't know. I, I just think, I just think in future I will not be as obsessed about what's going on in Britain as I, I always have been. I've always been a keen follower of the news, whereas now... I don't think Britain cares about me, so I don't care about Britain. But I'm not going to be a hypocrite. I am not going to be a hypocrite. I'm certainly not going to be one of those expats who lives in the other, another part of the world and still, you know, campaigns for the right of, right of Britain. At least I'm honest about it. I mean, the classic case of that was the Brexiteers, wasn't it? I mean, you know, those Brexiteers, people who lived in places like Benidorm and places like that, some of, the, some of them, and I've met some of them, were the most vociferous about campaigning for Brexit. Britain out of the European Union. And now that Britain's out of the European Union, those very same people are finding that they can't live in those countries like Spain for, for longer than 90 days without renewing their visa. Uh, you, you, you know, maybe when they voted Brexit and campaigned for it, they didn't think it applied to them. Well, sorry, mate, it applies to all of us. And look at the other crap that's always in the media. All this woke stuff. I mean, what's this all about? The Western world, it's not just Britain, it's all the other countries. You know, I hear Canada and, the, yeah, you know, and all other countries. All, you know, they're obsessed with all this woke stuff. And, and you, you, you know, and, oh, you can't say this, and you can't say that. And all. Well, uh, here in Thailand, do, do they really seem that bothered about all that stuff here? I wouldn't have thought, I don't think they're really that bothered about that. It's certainly not to the extent of Britain. I mean, here, 
I mean, it's, you know, it seems like a far more relaxed environment here. I mean, in Britain, I, I, I'd, be, I'd be afraid to go out these days for fear that I upset a police officer uh, for using the, the wrong word, and then he arrested me and made up a pack of bloody lies on a statement saying I was drunk and aggressive and all the rest. You know, you know lying bastards the way that the British police are. I mean, here, you know, I feel more relaxed going out. I mean, the, you know, the worst thing that, you know, here is like drunken farangs and, you know, this is a safe environment. I actually feel safer walking around Bangkok at night time than I would in London. Definitely. Not a question about it. All that woke stuff, all that namby-pamby woke stuff, I'll give me a break. I mean, I mean, a lot of it's funny. It's funny, you know. I mean, it's hilarious. I don't need to go into examples because I'd probably get demonetized if I did. But um, a lot of that woke stuff, I found it quite hilarious. But after a while, the joke wears off. And, and who knows, will woke ever do a U-turn and people realise how absurd it all is and all this kind of crap? No, just give me this place any day. It just doesn't... It just doesn't seem to be that much of a problem here. Hello. Hello, how are you? Hello, okay. Uh, should I care about Britain? Well, you know, that cold damn country 6,000 miles away. No, I don't think I'll care about it. I care about as much about Britain as what it cares about me. Sod all. Okay, so I'm not going to let it worry me in future. When I see a news report on something really bad, I mean, like I did the other day with that, you know, that sort of attack, uh, you know, that, that was in, in the news, I, you know, I still feel really, really... My heart goes out to the innocent people who were being hurt in England. It were, were hurting because, you know, their country doesn't seem to be theirs anymore and there's all kinds of heinous things going on which they don't appear to have any control about and the politicians are not going to help you and uh, I'm just glad that I'm out of there. I care about me. I've got to care about me. I mean, you know, I'm a big boy. I'm 61 years of age. I'm a man of the world. I've travelled the world and um, but I've still got to care about me because I'm still in, a, in you know, technically a strange country and I've got to carve out a nice little life here for myself. So... I've got to care about me. That's my priority now. See, the thing is, now that I've come this far, you know, the challenges that I've got, they're, they're the ones that are going to preoccupy me, um, uh, yeah, you know, for the foreseeable future. Well, for the permanent future, I would have thought. So what's happened in Britain now? It's not primarily in my, in my concerns anymore. But I care about you. You, almost 50,000 subscribers who have been watching this channel over, over the years. And it's been really, really great. And also, I'm, I'm also just about to touch 15 million views. One, five, 15 million views on this channel. So yeah, the Steady Eddie channel is, uh, is, is, is still going up in the world. And Steady Eddie Live is a, is a real fun, action-packed um, adventure, adventure channel. Sporadic live streams, I don't want uh, yesterday, and I think it went out about three o'clock in the morning, British time, so, something like that. Um, or, or, or what was it? Was it was it five o'clock? Oh, it was something like that. Sporadic live streams for this, a sporadic guy. Check out the live channel, Steady Eddie Live. The link is on the homepage of this channel. There's something a bit different, something a bit chaotic and fun. Okay. So anyway, I've said my piece. Wherever you are in the world, whether it's Britain, America, Canada, Europe, Australia, anywhere where you are, anywhere where you watch this channel, then thanks for your time. Thanks for your, your support all, all, over the years. Uh, there's plenty more to come from me. And for now, I'm going to have a little wander in this delightful environment. And I'm going to treat myself to a nice cold beer in the hot sunshine. Thanks for watching. Peace, love and goodwill to everyone. And I'll see you soon. Cheers.